effort in order to make sure that the G20 series goes well. I must thank Kishan Reddy ji for making all of us a part of this event. It's because of him and his efforts that we are here and we are having this beautiful even being organized in the beautiful paradise on earth. Also seated next to him, Ramshan Ji has just joined. I don't think I have to make any introduction because people come to see us because we are sitting beside him. So, we have, you just now heard, our very dynamic colleague, Sharpa, Mitab Kanji, Mr. Shingla Ji, Mr. Poor Chandra Ji, Arvind Singh Ji, our dynamic secretary, Vidyavati Ji, who still recently was part of our ministry, our loss is there again now. All the officials of the Ministry of Tourism, delegates, representatives from different G20 countries and the other NYT countries, ladies and gentlemen. I think over the last few moments when I was uh, trying to capture what all I was seeing and I was also listening to Amitabh, the first thought that occurred to me was that it is indeed a moment of rejuvenation, a moment of reincarnation. And I'm sure many of you would agree with me, at least to those who, are, who belong to my generation, that this event has actually transported us back by about half a century. And exactly 50 years back, we had another star from Mumbai who shook the lake besides the Dal Lake and sent the entire valley rocking in his area. And his name, as you rightly guessed, was Shami Kapoor, who virtually made Kashmir his home. And sometimes I wonder, I tend to think, but for Kashmir, whether Shami Kapoor would have been what he ultimately wanted to be. So that is the magic of Kashmir. The series of movies, Kashmir ki Kali, Janwar, Rajkumar, he, I think, also not only became a star out of Kashmir, but contributed immensely in personifying Kashmir to the rest of the world. Yeah. And uh, many like him would stay here for months together. The iconic hotel we have sitting beside us, Lalit Hotel was one of the favorite abodes where they would stay. That time in those days, it was known as Overai. And the entire shooting of the film would be done there. I remember one of the movies, Dasla, was virtually they didn't walk out of the Hunger Gate. And uh, many of the beautiful songs would be decked up in the hotel. Haduniya Usi Ki Zamana Usi Ka. Was actually done in the bar of Hotel Ogara. The old timers would remember. Main Pal Do Pal Ka Shair, with a beautiful lyric written by Sahir Nudhyambi. Was done in one of those rooms in Hotel Lalit. And they got some girls from the women college to be the audience. Some of these oldies still remember. So it's, it's virtually a nostalgic. It's, it takes you back. And uh, I think after that, it was also because Kashmir was professionally also, I think, the best location that a film producer or director can find. Because it's versatile. You have plateaus here. You have lakes here. You have fountains here. You have snow peaks here. You have skating areas here, you have golf courses here. And it's very cost effective. You have tulip gardens here. You don't have to travel to Holland. It's just beside the hotel where some of our delegates are living. So all this made it a natural destination. And as Amita was saying that every movie would actually have at least one sojourn. And in the process, it became a huge avenue of revenue as well as business. We had school boys and girls doing part-time jobs as extras, as clapper boys. And in Jai Jai Shiv Shankar, the song, besides the temple, we had one of our local groups doing that drum beating. So it became a huge vocation actually till about 1990. And uh, Amitabh was now referring to Bobby. But what is significant is that Raj Kapoor, just before Bobby, had experimented doing a movie in Europe, which was a great hit called Sangam, a triangular love story. 
And after that, he came back to an autobiographical, which was good, but didn't work well in the box office. So as a revenge, he came back. And when he came back eventually, his natural choice was Kashmir. He didn't go to Europe, he came to Kashmir okay. to prove that he was back. So that, I think this is something the next generation needs to be informed about because suddenly in 1990 and thereafter, there was a halt. And the serious researchers of these times would realize that many of those movies which are being shot in Kashmir Valley during that time were at their wits end. The producers and the directors didn't know where to go. One of those movies I vividly remember was Hena. The last movie which Raj Kapoor directed during his lifetime. He passed away somewhere in late 1980s. Then his progeny took over the task of completing the movie Hena. But by the time they started, it was 1989-90 and everything came to a halt. And I vividly recall because Rishi used to be quite in touch with me, Rishi Kapoor, unfortunately no longer with us now. They had to do a lot of search across the world to match that location where they left that earlier scene of Hena. So finally, I think they zeroed down on a location in Vienna. Now you can imagine how much of resource, how much of cost, how much of effort it would have taken. So that is Kashmir. It's not only that we sing songs out of, out of being attached to this place, or being romantic about it, or being philosophical about it, or being trying to create a myth about it. It's also that you see as a hardcore professional, you have no choice, no better off. And then I think now this is the time of revival. That's why he said a moment of rejuvenation. And the other part, which is also not much talked about, because our memory goes back only up to Shami Kapoor, maximum to Rajesh Khanna, then maximum way back to Devara. But the first star of Bombay industry was produced from Jammu Kashmir. I know how many in this room would be able to guess it. It's Karodhapati question. Kaun Vanega Karodhapati. Jammu Kashmir has contributed hugely, hugely to Indian film industry. And you know who was the first star? Can anybody make a guess? Oh, no, no. Barai Sani was never from Kashmir. Barai Sani was from Lahore. He was from West Pakistan. No, K.L. Segal. Kundalal Segal, who is, if you read the archives of film industry, the first who came to be known as a star was Kundalal Segal. He used to perform in theater over here. They went to Simla as a salesman in some company. There he discovered, he was discovered a PC Sarkar who had a studio in Calcutta because most of the industry was in Calcutta those days. The, later on the film industry, Bollywood took over and the capital also shifted over to Bombay, the national capital. Then he took him over to Calcutta and then he of course became a singing star. Then also came back to Bombay. And in the recent times, not Balrai Sahani, but another Punjabi family hailed from Srinagar and that was Ramanan Sagar. Ramanan Sagar actually is Chopra, that uh, name adopted is Sagar. And his nephew Vidu Viro Chopra is a good friend of ours, he was my senior in the college, is uh, now a very successful producer. He's recently made a movie called uh, uh, B.A. Fade. So he wanted to do a shooting outside the UPSC office, which I, to an extent, tried to help him. I think it will be at least very far. So we have contributed hugely. Yes, Om Prakash, of course, was from Jammu and Kashmir, as you said. So was Sundar, the other comedian. But one of the iconic stars was Raj Kumar, which is hardly you correct. He was a Kashmiri Pandit and of Sajeevan. So it's been, it's not only, it's been a two-way traffic. While Bollywood benefited out of Kashmir, the Kashmir also contributed to it. And now, if you have a revival of this, if the traffic starts, which I'm sure the Ram Sharanji is going to be the harbinger of this, the, the torch bearer of this, when his leg shakes, the valley would again go hysteric as it went when Shami Kapoor shook his leg. Because we can't match his leg, nor Shami Kapoor's. Not everybody is born with that leg. But once the 
gateways are opened, you will see people even from abroad coming here because you can't find all the locations within a radius of just 10, 20 kilometers. You go from Pahalgaon to Gulmangar, Sonoma, whatever. And even within Kishore, you just have to sit in, a, in one of these gardens and shoot the entire film. And as uh, Amitabh was saying that it's a synonymous with romantic cinema, it's also been synonymous with melancholy cinema. And I tell you how, it's a single movie called Kavi Kavi, which was directed by Yash Chopra. On the one hand, you have those all those romantic songs between Rakhi and Amitabh, and then also Rak Amitabh singing a solo there. And then you also have the mist behind, and in a long coat, Amitabh walking out and singing the last line of that famous poem, Main janta hon to ghair magar yohi. Magar yohi. Because Sai's very lyrics were adopted into the movies, much after the movies were made. Because this is part of, I know, I can go on and on on this subject for a whole day. Sai produced two magnum opus, one was Pachhaiyan, the other was Talkhiyan. Those two majmu hai jo, Nazmoke. He wrote when he was just 2022. Later on, these were adopted in the movies. So this was one of the songs which were adopted from one of his books, which is actually a melancholy song. Now, this is the last line of the poem. And then you have and the backdrop was being provided by Kashmir, the same location. You didn't have to use steam showers in the studio as you use if you have seen a movie being shot. It was happening naturally. You just had to walk to a different period with a lot of mist. And Amitabh just walked out with a long coat also signifying melancholy and sadness. And sang that one last line of the song in a different location, in a different background. So that I think is only a cinematographer, uh, someone who is deeply involved in the business of filmmaking would be able to appreciate. You have a win-win situation over here, a win-win location over here. And many of the producers I have known personally who would come here with a very little cast, <coughs> and they would open boys and girls sit like here. And they would do the rest of the job. And so many movies you've seen those choruses happening. So I think there's a huge, huge potential. I'm glad I was complimenting our friend, Honorable Minister for Tourism, Kishan Reddy ji. They are coming out with a national strategy on film tourism. And therefore, when the film tourism happens, it will be two-way traffic. More and more of youngsters, we have, we have a very handsome lot of youth over here who are looking for breaks. So they'll also find a break in Bollywood, Tollywood, every good. Not in woods, but in glamour wood, because woods has a different meaning. So there will be two-way traffic. At the same time, our bakery in 1960s was next known to be the next to London bakery, the Bollywood bakery, the Kashmir Sinagar bakery, because we had so many of, so much of influx of the foreign tourists that our local boys and girls learn to speak English and learn to prepare English cakes. So it's a, it's a, it's a multifarious enrichment which is going to happen. I must compliment and thank Kishan Reddy ji and his team for giving us this opportunity. We were waiting to happen. And under Prime Minister Modi, I think this is the best time happening for India, for Jammu and Kashmir. I'm sure those of the friends who come here from other places would go back as messengers and tell them, this is how it appears. When I was entering in, some media person asked me what is the difference. I said, that was Union Minister Jitendra Singh talking about the association that Kashmir has had with Indian cinema. I'd leave you with a footnote before I say goodbye. We were talking about the Kapoors. Shammi Kapoor has his heart in Kashmir. His last rites uh, were not held in Kashmir, but he wanted a part of his to remain in Kashmir. And that's why his asthiyan still lay 
buried in the Dal Lake and that's how close the association of the Kapoors, the first family of the film industry, has been with Jammu and Kashmir. Leaving you with that and that's a wrap from my side.